the oil is leaking on my car. So <laughs> the phone will be off, but I'll be connected. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> Let me just hear what it says. Hey. <clears throat> Marcel, is the department ready? I want to open this meeting whether the department is ready or not, uh, members. I let me um, welcome everybody to this meeting. It is already two minutes past four. Honorable members of staff members of the department, welcome to the meeting of social services and the health um, select committee. Um, <clears throat> The agenda is as follows. It's the opening and welcome. Then it will be apologies. And then from 10 past four till court till five to five, there will be a briefing by the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. And we will do the consideration, sorry, and adoption of the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and the rights of persons with disabilities in Africa in terms of Section 2312 of the Constitution of 1996. Then at 5 o'clock, it will be discussions and responses and the adoption of the report. And we will then excuse the department and then deal with the adoption of committee minutes or any other minutes if there are any, and it will be closure. Um, can I get a mover and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda, please? I move, Chairperson. Is that Lee? Yes, Chairperson. Thank you, my dear. And <clears throat> sorry, can I get the seconder? Malika second. Thank you, Member Malika. Um, members, that is on, on the adoption of the agenda. Um, is there any apologies except the apology of Member Chabaling that is having um, some difficulties? Uh, Marcel, is there any other apologies? Um, from the committee side, Chair, we don't have any apologies. We have all our members present. I think Mr. Baha is struggling to connect. Um, the minister, I think, told Chair, sent an apology. She has just arrived in New York at one of those sessions, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Marcel. Um, <clears throat> members, um, can we now have the presentation from the department? Chairperson. Yes. Good afternoon. This is the Director General. Um, I've been driving, I've been listening. I was not able to, to present, but now I've just I'm just at the gate. I'm asking for one minute because it seems as if Put is not here. I'll do the presentation myself if Put is not there. Just one minute. Okay, Ms. Um, Manolake, no, that's fine. To, I'll give to you have the car. Yes, no, it's fine. Um, we'll wait for you, Ms. Madalek. Eh? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chairperson, my name is Puti Mabelebele. My apologies. Oh, you've joined. Uh, okay. Joined. Yes, I have joined. I'm not sure what is the problem with my main computer, but I've joined through the phone also. I just hope I'm audible. And then uh, if I can request that... Uh, the presentation as we sent it be shared, uh, then I can present. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Marcel, <clears throat> will you guys be able to share the presentation? I have made a put your co host as well as Jack, as well as um, another colleague of them in the department, Chair. They are able to share from this side. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Bongi, for sharing the presentation. Um, can I go ahead, Chair? Thank you so much. Yes, um, we appearing before the, the Committee on Health and uh, Social Services to present the ratification of the AU Disability Protocol. Uh, this morning we presented to the Portfolio Committee on Women and now we are presenting to the Select Committee on Health and Social Services about the steps to be followed up to the finalization of the ratification by Parliament. Uh, next slide, uh, Bongi. Um, the purpose being to present the AU Disability Protocol uh, for approval of the ratification, but also to request the recommendation of the Select Committee for this process to proceed to Parliament for voting. Next slide. Uh, just in terms of background, uh, Chair, uh, on the 29th of uh, January 2018, uh, the 30th ordinary session of the Assembly held in Addis Ababa um, adopted the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Africa. Now, the AU Protocol on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities aims to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human and people's rights by all persons with disabilities and also to ensure respect to their inherent dignity. This particular protocol constitutes an African instrument to advance the rights of persons with disabilities, cognizant of the obligations contained in the UNCRPD, which is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which was ratified by South Africa in 2007. So South Africa signed the AU Protocol on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities on the 29th of April 2019, uh, which then signaled the country's uh, support and intention to ratify uh, the protocol. The Department of Social Development, prior to, to, to the RPD, which is the Rights of Persons with Disabilities branch, joining the Department of Women, it was with the Department of Social Development. And upon the reconfiguration, this particular branch then joined the Department of Women and continued with the process. But prior to that, whilst the, the function was still with social development, extensive consultation uh, took place where uh, relevant departments, civil society organizations, chapter nine institutions uh, were, were, were consulted widely regarding the required mechanism to domesticate this protocol. And subsequent to that, the presidential minute was issued to ensure that South Africa signs this protocol. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Yes, let's have she's shifted to um, on strategic focus. Uh, on the screen, they're still on background. That's fine. I think members will not be able to see the strategic focus. It's still on background. I'm sure it has frozen. Yes, the strategic focus as it's appearing there. Um, um, the National Development Plan uh, commits uh, South Africa to work towards an inclusive, prosperous uh, uh, society which is free of the scourge of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. And 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 these are where are addressed uh, should have been addressed by 2030. Now, the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities, which was approved by cabinet in 2015, provides a roadmap for the equitable inclusion of and participation and beneficiation by persons with disabilities in realizing the vision 2030 that is contained in the NDP. Uh, it brings together the NDP obligations contained in the EU, UNCRPD uh, ratified in 2007, as well as the Agenda 2063 and the Agenda 2030 on Sustainable Development. So the white paper comp comprises of all that is contained in this instrument. Uh, 
Now, in 2019, President Ramaphosa announced uh, during the SONA that we will submit the protocol on the rights of persons with disabilities in Africa to Parliament uh, for ratification. Now, the ratification of this protocol will strengthen the African perspective in the domestication process of the United of the UNCRPD, which is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which is currently underway. Uh, it will furthermore provide us with a continental platform to share good practice and learn from other countries how best to accelerate advancement of the rights of persons with disabilities in the continent. Uh, the provisions contained in the protocol furthermore provide guidance to ensuring disability equitable implementation of all the seven priorities in the current medium term uh, strategic framework. So all the instruments that we have in government to ensure that we're able to implement and successfully address the rights of persons with disabilities have been considered uh, in the composition of the protocol. Next slide. Uh, implications for departments and vulnerable groups is that one, we will not have any additional organizational or personnel implications uh, as ratification of the protocol enhances the current arrangements uh, rather than added additional responsibilities and functions. And also there will be no additional financing requirements uh, as the ratification of the protocol still will be enhancing uh, the current arrangements and programs already contained in the implementation matrix uh, of the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities. Um, we intend in this year, 2022-23, uh, our financial year in terms of our plans to ensure that we go on a countrywide awareness campaign, uh, which will talk to all the instruments that we have developed, including especially this particular protocol that will have been, if once it has been ratified uh, by parliament. So we intend to ensure that we don't just announce the, the, that the AU protocol has been ratified, but we would want to ensure that we go in depth in terms of content and bring it to the attention of persons with disabilities in their respective communities so that they are aware of what this particular protocol entails and how it will benefit them. Um, the obligations and standards contained in the protocol are consistent with the constitution and the ratification of the protocol will strengthen the promotion and protection of the rights of persons with disabilities, the rights of children with disabilities, women with disabilities, and older persons with disabilities, among others, are those groups uh, who are elevated specifically by the protocol in its uh, designated articles. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> in terms of implementation, we envisage that the protocol has to be considered by both the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces for purposes of ratification. And once ratified, the Department of International Relations and Cooperation will deposit the instrument of ratification with the African Union. We have attached uh, on the list of documents the draft instrument of ratification, which upon ratification, then the uh, DIRCO will then uh, deposit uh, to the African Union. Now, Article 34.1 of the protocol requires that the protocol be domesticated through the development of national legislation in order to enable the courts to enforce the anti-discrimination laws and to reach reasonable and fair judgment on case law, proving discrimination against persons with disabilities. We also envisage that the domestication of the AU protocol will be integrated in the current process which is underway to domesticate the UNCRPD. Um, and, and as a department in line with our National Disability Rights Coordinating Mechanism, which is also now in the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, will continue to ensure that uh, this is, is, is addressed through the different mechanisms that will, we have and the machinery of government that we have. On Article 30, according to Article 34.2, of the protocol requires that state parties designate, establish, strengthen, and maintain at a domestic level one or several mechanisms to monitor the implementation of policy, service delivery, uh, protection of rights of persons with disabilities. And again, Article 33.2 of the UNCRPD 
and Article 34 of the African Union Disability Protocol provide for the designation of an independent monetary mechanism of both instruments by law. Um, Section 13.1b of the South African Human Rights Commission Act of 2013 uh, empowers the South African Human Rights Commission to monitor the implementation of and compliance with international and regional conventions and treaties, international and regional covenants, and international and regional chapters relating to the object of the commission. So we do have a, a mechanism that will assist us to monitor uh, through the uh, uh, South African Human Rights Commission to monitor the implementation of the protocol and compliance thereof. Um, in terms of the of risks and mitigation, we have made as a country an undertaking to the African Union on the 29th of April 2019 to ratify the protocol and commence with the process of domestication immediately after ratification. So if we fail to ratify the protocol, we would be damaging the reputation of, of, of South Africa, and we may compromise service delivery and protection uh, of the rights and human dignity of persons with disabilities. Next slide. Which I think it's a concluding slide. Okay, the financial implications, as indicated earlier, we are not foreseeing any additional financing requirements. Uh, as all the financing that is required to domesticate the protocol are contained in the current arrangements and programs uh, in line with the implementation matrix of the white paper on the rights of persons with disabilities. Next slide. The constitutional implications. Uh, once this protocol is ratified, we'll be able to fulfill the constitutional master and will be enforceable through local legislation by our court's post-domestication pro project. And Section 2312 of the Constitution provides the mandate that uh, international agreement binds the Republic uh, only after it has been approved by resolution in both the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. Next slide. We therefore, in conclusion, recommend that the committee approve for the ratification uh, by parliament and further processing to deposit the protocol uh, to the head office in Addis Ababa. Thank you, Chairperson. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, maybe, thanks. Maybe the chairperson has been. Thank you, um, uh, Ms. Maluleke. I see your hand is raised. Yes, Chair. I just wanted to add, um, in order to remove maybe some misunderstanding, if there is misunderstanding, uh, because in the morning we were with the portfolio committee, but I think there was a serious misunderstanding domestication is after the ratification of the instrument. So the issue that was raised was there's no legislation that is implementing the, 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 the instrument. You domesticate after you have ratified, but also this protocol is similar, similar, exactly similar to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So if there are any obligations or whatever, we already have those obligations in terms of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. South Africa is also part of the AU, hence it is critical that we also sign the AU because there is also that perception that South Africa wants to associate itself with the UN, but not the, the AU. The, 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 the obligations are the same. We're not uh, bringing new obligations, but the obligations that we have. But also the South African Law Reform Commission is in the process of domesticating the UN a, a, a convention on the rights of persons with disabilities. If this instrument is already, if this instrument is ratified, then automatically they will include the, the this protocol where they mention the UN, um, uh, the UN protocol, the UN convention on the rights of persons with disabilities. They will say and the AU protocol on persons with disabilities. The protocol is already there um, because the main issue was 
how are you going to enforce it if you don't have legislation? But our constitution is very clear that no instrument will uh, uh, be of force and uh, effect until we domesticate it. And domesticating, domestication happens after the ratification. So I thought maybe uh, uh, I need to, to clarify that one, but also to indicate that the state law advisor, both the state law advisor, uh, Justice and Justice and Indeco, they support. And the only thing that raised a, a confusion um, and in the morning is because the one uh, the state law advisor from 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 Deco was saying there's no legislation, and we had to indicate that the South African Law Reform Commission is in the process of developing legislation. And uh, in fact, the issue paper was 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 uh, gazetted last year, and there were consultations. Now they are busy incorporating the inputs and deciding whether they will develop one legislation or they will need um, two or three separate legislations. That is what they are focusing on now. However, I don't see any uh, uh, challenge with this instrument because. And um, also we have a white paper which had, which had already incorporated this. Uh, um, uh, Puti had said that it has incorporated the UN uh, um, convention. So already this, this, this protocol will find uh, the ground being ready. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, DJ, for that clarification. Um, members, before I move on to the question, um, is our legal person in the meeting? Good afternoon, Chairperson. Um, yes, uh, I'm Barbara Lewis, and I'm the Parliamentary Legal Advisor assisting the committee in this issue. I am present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, whenever we need to get an input from you, I will give you that opportunity. Um, Thank you, Chair. Do you want to go now, or must I... I think I, I'll, I'll finish with you before I move over to members. Yes, Lewis, you can also, if you want to give an input, I will allow thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, colleagues from the department, uh, both from uh, the Department of Women, Children and Persons with Disabilities, as well as DERCA, um, I had a glance at the uh, legal opinions that, the, um, that was just referred to. And not to, I, I don't want to... Um, just repeat everything that's said, so I'm going to keep it very short and sweet. Uh, our office can find nothing that's a legal impediment currently to the um, committee expressing its support in the NCOP vote uh, for the AU protocol. The, everything that's in there, as has been stated, is al um, aligned with the sentiment also that's in the Bill of Rights, the rights to the, uh, the rights that overlap there. So just legally speaking, we can't find anything presently that prohibits or impedes the committee from expressing its support. And as explained, domestication will then follow through um, legislation and other instruments and nothing in future pre prevents the committee from asking the executive to report on how that implementation is going and how, how that is um, uh, being given legal framework and effect to. But at present, just for, uh, for the section 231 obligation that is placed on parliament, um, for purposes of ratification, our office um, aligns ourselves with the uh, previous opinions expressed by the department. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. <clears throat> Members, um, we've got the presentation from the department and the legal issues was also explained. I will now open up the meeting um, for members. If you've got any questions of clarity, or any input that you want to make, you can raise your hands now. Okay, if that's the case, um, it seems like everybody is satisfied with the presentation. Um, I will now ask that the select committee, we need then uh, a member to propose that we agree with um, the endorsement and also that we agree. Um, thank you, Marcel. 
Um, members, I will read out the report of the Select Committee and of the Health and Social Services and the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Africa in terms of Section 2312 of the Constitution 1996, dated 22nd March 2022. The Select Committee on Health and Social Services have considered the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Africa in terms of Section 2312 of the Constitution 1996 reports as follows. The committee recommends that the Council, in terms of Section 2312 of the Constitution, approve the said protocol. Report to be considered. Can we have a mover uh, um, to endorse this report? Members of the select committee, I see Member Baha. Member Baha. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I want to move um, in support um, of this uh, presentation. So I'm in support. Okay, thank you, Member Baha. Is there a second for that um, proposal, members? I second. Member Maleka, second. Thank you very much, Member Maleka. Um, members, is there um, an opposer that we um, adopt this report? It doesn't seem like it, no? So let me then um, welcome the, the committee's acceptance of the report. And um, let me thank you, membership of this um, select committee that you endorse this protocol report. I will hand over to administration, uh, Marcel what's next on our agenda. Thank you, Chairperson. We have come to the end of our meeting. The only other issue we have to deal with is the committee minutes of the 15th of March, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Maluleke, um, let me take this opportunity to um, DG and your, and your team to thank you for for your presence and your presentation into this meeting. Let me also um, thank Ms. Lewitz from the Parliamentary Legal <coughs> Department for your input and to our staff members. Um, thank you very much. I think this is one of the, of the re uh, um, reports that is very important for South Africa and for our people in this country um, with disabilities. And this um, protocol will take us forward in making sure that we adhere also um, to the legislation and to improve the lives of our people in this country living with disabilities. I do thank you. Anything from the department, Mrs. Maleku? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much for your continued support to the department. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Ms. Maluleke and Ms. Puti and all the others, you are excused. We will now continue with our official business of our committee, but thank you very much that you bless us and send our regards to your minister. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members.
thank you, members. Um, we will know with the draft minutes of the virtual meeting of the Select Committee on Health and Social Services of the 15th March 2022, and the agenda was the briefing by the Department of Social Development and SASA, and all members were present. Um, and I believe you did receive this minutes. Um, if there is anyone who think there is some rectifications that needs to happen in this minutes, you can now raise your hand. If there is no rectifications on this minutes, you can continue, Marcel, because members did receive it. Um, if, if you think there's no corrections, no rectifications, nothing that you need to do, we can move <clears throat> for a mover to endorse this set of minutes. Dongeni moves the chair. Thank you, Member Dongeni. Do we have a second? Chibi as I can. Thank Chap you. Hassan. Thank you, Member Chubi. Um, this set of minutes is then a dose. Marcel, is that the only one? Chairperson, that is the, uh, the last minute that we are adopting, and this is also our last meeting for the term, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, members. Now, I, uh, uh, Tabile, your hand is up. Tabi? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, please excuse me for doing this, but I just thought I should take the time on our behalf to wish you a very happy birthday. Um, so may you have a very um, happy and blessed birthday and a wonderful year going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Tabi. I just wanted to say thank you for the short meeting. I've got a house full of family who's waiting for me. <laughs> but um, thank you very much for that blessing. Um, happy birthday, Che! <laughs> Sorry, just for jumping in. Enjoy, enjoy your day. Thank you, and thank, thank you for you. The okay, and thank you for you for making this meeting so short. Now I can enjoy my family. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Che. <laughs> thank you, Che. Have a blessed birthday. Thank Bye. You. This meeting is adjourned. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Record.